The end of the war is good news, but it's not an occasion to celebrate. So many people and so many families have been harmed, killed, traumatized, asked to kill, been made a refugee to accomplish nothing. Is there any way to make this right? For some, it only seems that the correct action is to occupy Afghanistan and exert destabilizing pressure on Central Asia and the Middle East forever. We can't make extractive military violence of the past two decades right, but we can start by making an accounting. We need to listen to the stories of people harmed by this war and the others in Iraq and Syria, Yemen, elsewhere that continue and enter these stories into the record. We should look at what our society gave up over these past 20 years. The so-called war on terror was sold to us with lies and cost us much more than the trillions of dollars that we spent. During this period, the United States prosecuted more whistleblowers than the rest of our history combined. Daniel Hale was recently sentenced to 45 months for exposing that 90% of those killed by our drones were not the intended targets. In other words, they were regular civilians. None of these architects of these wars or those who lied to us along the way will serve a day. We've grown to accept warrantless wiretapping and monitoring of our online activity. The officials who took these liberties, built these systems, and lied to us remain free. I don't want to claim the government would have spent those trillions on making life better for Americans, but how many dental visits, doctor's appointments, how much housing and education could have been provided with that money? We know that one in three COVID deaths are related to a lack of health coverage. These policy decisions are not unrelated. Instead, we bought pain, suffering, and death in exchange for a few, a few people enjoying the increase in their rate beyond stock value. I joined Veterans for Peace in 2017 after seeing them use their status as veterans to support the water protectors at Standing Rock. I knew this was something I wanted to be a part of. I want to be a part of a movement that ends U.S. military violence and pushes for the reallocation of these resources toward the public good. Americans struggling to find a job, afford a dental visit, or get an education should no longer be enticed or coerced into violence on the poorest people in the world to benefit a few corporations. Since 2001, we've spent $2 trillion, $2 trillion just on our war in Afghanistan, $6 trillion total in the war on terror, $2 trillion on the war in Afghanistan, which amounts to $300 million a day. $300 million a day we've spent on a war that we so clearly lost and made worse, killed hundreds of thousands of people, at least 70,000 innocent civilians, right? So that's where we are today. In fact, tomorrow, our House representatives are discussing the, the possibility of increasing the Pentagon budget by $37 billion. We came out of war today, and our representatives want to spend more money on the Pentagon budget. And what is their justification for this, right? Why do we need more money for the Pentagon budget if we just ended our forever wars, right? And they'll, tr they'll try to tell you and fear monger that we need to pour even more money into our Pentagon budget because China is our enemy, right? Because shame, shame, right? So we're at a moment where we're celebrating the end of one war and our politicians want to lead us into another war. And why is that, right? And I think some of the speakers have already spoken today about some of the reasons why people want us to go to war. Everyday people like you and I have no interest in going to war with the people of China. We have much more in common with people there than with the executives at Raytheon and Northrop Grumman and the Lockheed Martin who want us to go to war because that will line their pockets, right? They are the only people who have benefited from our endless wars over the past 20 years. And we cannot let them try to drag us into another endless war just so they can continue making huge profits. So one thing we do at Code Pink and that I would love for everyone here to do is if you go to codepink.org slash divest congress, you can reach out to your congressional representative, including Nanette Baragon, and ask her, Stop taking campaign contributions from the companies that want us to go to war, right? Your congressional representative.
every year you go to approve the Pentagon budget and you take money from the companies who benefit from that, that doesn't make any sense, right? That's unacceptable. Last year, in the early days of the COVID quarantine, I reconnected with a couple guys that I served with. One of them has become very active in helping our shipmates get access to mental health care through the VA. What he discovered is that damn near every single one of us had considered suicide at some point following the deployment. Every day, one active duty soldier dies by suicide. We've lost more veterans to suicide over the past 20 years than we did in action. This withdrawal is the right thing to do.